Maize is a grass which is grown in most parts of the world. Originally, it was a native of tropical America, but now it flourishes in North and South America, Africa, Australia, Southern Asia, Southern and Central Europe, and can be grown as far north as the British Isles. The maize seed head, or cob, is made up of rows of single grains. Each grain is really a fruit, with one seed in it. Here is a single fruit. In suitable conditions, each grain should produce one new maize plant. Here is a seed in good soil, and it begins to grow. The radical grows downwards and soon bears many fine root hairs. Watch the plumule. It grows upwards while several more roots grow downwards. The plumule has a sharp hard point which pierces through the surface of the earth. Now the young maize grows above ground. To balance the glowing plant, the roots below spread through the soil. In time, leaves develop, and as their blades spread out, their surface offers much resistance to the wind. As more leaves expand, the plant offers still more resistance to the wind. It's able to withstand the wind because above the ground the maize now grows more roots to hold it securely anchored. These are called strut roots. Like other green plants, the maize takes in air and gives out gases. To do this, it uses tiny openings called stomata in its leaves. Take a piece of leaf surface and magnify it very much to show one of these stomata in action. When it is open, the plant takes in air and also gives out its waste gases. In bad weather, the opening closes. So rain does not choke the plant. Instead, the drops fall from leaf to leaf till they reach the ground. The permanent roots of the maize are about five centimeters beneath the ground. The roots are spread widely and hold the plant very firmly in the earth. Root hairs develop and through these the plant absorbs moisture from rain, as well as dissolved mineral salts in the soil. In a very highly magnified root hair, you can see the living contents circulating inside. The mineral salts absorbed by the root hairs are essential for the plant. This is proved if we grow maize in experimental glass jars. By withholding different mineral salts, one from each of the different jars, we can find what the maize plant really needs for growth. The plant here at the end has all it needs. The second one is without phosphorus, the next without potassium, this is without magnesium, this without calcium, this without iron, and this last without nitrogen. A plant with all the necessary mineral salts like the end one on the left, grows rapidly. As it gains height, it is even more likely to be blown over, but it develops a second set of strut roots, which support it firmly in the ground. A fully grown plant offers much resistance to the wind, so a third and sometimes a fourth set of strut roots are grown. The last set to grow is at the highest level, A fully grown maize plantation is dense enough and tall enough for a man to lose his way in it. When the plant is fully grown, it flowers. First come the tassels or male flowers. Watch these develop. Actually, the development takes about 14 days, but this depends on the weather.
The male flowers are near the top of the plant and lower down grow the silks or female flowers. Now watch the silks develop. They also really take about 14 days to grow, but we've speeded the growth up for you. The fully opened silks are really a bunch of stigmas. Each stigma is over 25 centimetres long. When the silks are open below, the tassels above are ripening. Each male flower has three stamens. These develop long slender filaments on which hang the anthers that contain the pollen grains. When the wind blows the tassels about, or if they are hit, the ripe anthers shed showers of pollen. Now you see a good reason for the silks being lower down on the plant than the tassels. The pollen from the tassels falls down onto the silks. The pollen you see falling may come from a tassel on the same plant or from another plant. As they fall, the pollen grains are caught on sticky hairs which stand up on the surface of the long stigmas. Look at this one grain in a close view. In the sugary solution covering the stigma, the pollen grain is beginning to grow a long tube. Inside, the tube is full of activity. As you see in this diagram, the tube grows down into the stigma. It reaches the ovary at the end of the long stigma and enters the ovule. In the growing pollen tube comes a male nucleus, the sperm. This is attracted to the female egg cell in the ovule and fuses with it. The egg cell forms an embryo which is capable of growing into a new maize plant. A second male nucleus joins with a second female nucleus and provides food for the tiny embryo. Within each of the ovules here, at the base of the silks, the embryo grows. The ovules develop into seeds from which new maize plants will grow. As the ovules develop, the silks gradually shrivel and the familiar cob swells and ripens. Here is a further stage of development. The cob is nearly mature. At length, the cob is ripe and the maize is ready to be harvested. Maize is one of the chief foodstuffs of the world. It's a most valuable food, especially for livestock of all kinds. In many countries, certain kinds of maize are made into bread. Maize is a remarkable grass and it is the universal corn.